Hello, this is Kaylee Gonzalez with MLC CAD Systems. The tech tip that I have for you today is in regards to establishing bill of materials IDs inside of SOLIDWORKS Composer. I want to show you a quick way that we can make BOM IDs, the neutral properties, upon insertion into Composer. Now, before I show you that, though, I want to make sure that we understand what Composer is currently doing and why that could potentially be an issue for your project. What I have open inside of Composer right now is just a really simple project. If I were to click on any of these components, you're going to notice that I don't actually have BOM IDs. This is very common when we insert a SOLIDWORKS assembly or part file into Composer for the first time. We wouldn't normally have any bill of materials IDs already set. Inside of Composer, one thing we want to understand is that when nothing has been inserted as a neutral property, we can then establish them independently in each particular view. So for example, if I go into view two and I go ahead and choose to generate BOM IDs, this does generate a complete list of bill of materials information that I can then use for my project. And I can even show and hide my bill of materials table. If I were to update this view, let's say I go into view three, which is the exact same files, just not exploded, just looks a little bit different. And I go to click on any of these components. Again, I do not have any BOM IDs. If I were to go ahead and add bill of materials IDs at this point, I have no guarantee that they will be the same as what was established in view two. There is a manual method inside of Composer that we can use to establish this, and that is by clicking on each individual component, highlighting your BOM ID, and then choosing to set as a neutral property. This is one method that you can go through to make sure that the BOM IDs are going to get set as the neutral property into every single view. Now with a small project like this, this process would not be overly invasive. However, if I did have a much larger project, what we would find is that probably would not be the way that we would want to go and approach this. Now, just to show you what this is doing, if I go back into view three, now if I click on any of these components, notice how my BOM ID is there. So that is a manual method that you can use to establish bill of materials IDs inside of Composer to make sure that they are not going to be different between every single view. Now for much larger projects, when you are working inside of Composer, there is actually a step that you can do with inside SOLIDWORKS that expedites the process that we just saw. And that is to actually add a bill of materials into your assembly file inside of SOLIDWORKS. If I go into SOLIDWORKS here, I have the exact same file. What I can do here is go under insert and then go down into tables and choose bill of materials. Now the bill of materials template that you're being prompted for is the exact same template that you would use inside of your SOLIDWORKS drawing. You can choose the same bomb type, top level, parts only. In this case, I'll choose indented and I'll choose detailing. When I click OK, I'm actually being prompted to where inside of my assembly file I want this bill of materials to reside. My recommendation is to put this in the notes area. The notes area is a specific annotation view that is designed for holding specific notes or tables of this nature. If you're not sure what an annotation view is, if you go back into your design tree, there is a folder in your design tree called annotations. This is how SOLIDWORKS by default organizes notes and dimensions respective to certain views. Every single file has a notes area. This is turned on by default. It is now saved inside of the file. I can right click and hide this or show it at any time. But the main idea here is that you want the bill of materials to be inside of your file because at this point, if I were to choose a save as and save as a SOLIDWORKS Composer document 
or I were to open this directly inside of Composer, we will actually have all of our BOM IDs set and they will match what's in your assembly and they will match what's in your drawing file. If I go back into Composer and let's go ahead and open up that file with the bill of material information. This is going to go ahead and open with all of your bill of materials information already established inside of the model. There's nothing else that we have to do. So what this means is if I were to go and choose just my subassembly, hide everything else, and I were to create a brand new view, Notice here, when I start clicking on any of these individual components, I am also grabbing my numbering system. Everything has already been established, so if I did need to create another bill of materials, everything here is going to generate and be the same as what is inside of my overall bill of materials from view one. Everything here is still going to be completely intact. And we'll see all of the intermediate items. Something to keep in mind here, Composer does distinguish between assembly level and feature level components a little bit differently. If I were to go into my assembly selection mode and choose my subassembly and then create a call out for just that, notice how that is going to be my number one. All of the other item numbers are going to be the dot one, dot two, dot three, dot four. If I were to go ahead and delete the assembly level and then choose all of my call outs, what I can then do is go down under my properties and instead of looking at the text as the bomb ID, I can actually explore some of these other meta properties. And in this case, meta property zero will actually give me these specific bomb IDs for those individual components. That is an additional item that you can use to make this even more accurate compared to your SOLIDWORKS model. So thank you for joining me for this tech tip. There are several things I covered from manually creating BOM IDs and establishing them as neutral properties to putting a bill of materials directly inside of your SOLIDWORKS assembly so that when you insert them into Composer, all the BOM IDs have neutral properties already and it's gonna really streamline your creation of additional parts list in Composer and make sure that your BOM IDs are consistent throughout your whole project. If you have any other questions about what you saw here, please contact us at MLC. We'd be glad to answer any questions that you have. Thanks, bye.